Hey everyone, Sky here to discuss The Abyss, starring Ed Harris, Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio, Michael Bean, and Leo Burmester, and directed by James Cameron. Now, why am I doing The Abyss? Because, first off, I miss James Cameron so much after Terminator 2, and while I was reviewing 3, I was like, you know what, why don't I just do James Cameron's filmography from... The Abyss, to True Lies, to Titanic, to After Hour, when I'm done with Terminator Dark Fate, I will get to Avatar. Even though the sequel's not coming out for like another couple of years, sure, but let's... And this is going to be my first viewing, two viewings of this movie, because I watched it twice. And this was a difficult movie to find, like, I was... The only place I was able to find it was on Cinemax, on my DVR. So, let's just get into this and see what I think. The score to this movie as it starts is magnificent and we start off in a submarine that is in peril and we don't know what swims by them and I like the fact it remains a mystery of what the underwater alien creatures look like until halfway into the movie. It keeps you in suspense the entire time and it puts you on the edge of your seat. Excuse my French for what I'm about to say here, but bitchy corporate boss Lindsay Brigman played by Mary Elizabeth Mestre Antonio goes to the workplace of her ex-husband Bud, played by Ed Harris. And these two characters grow on me as the movie progresses, and James Cameron uses these two as an ex-couple to a couple at the end of the movie, and it reminded me of what he went through with Gail and Heard, which I wasn't alive during then. Well, I mean, I was born, but... Moving on. Um, at the end of the movie, which I'll get to at the end of the movie, but... I love everyone's reaction as they're thinking, oh god, it's her. It was just hysterical. The underwater scenes are just gorgeous looking throughout the movie, and James Cameron pulls underwater cinematography off very well for 1989, and it's almost as amazing as the look of the T-1000 from Terminator 2 for, for 1991, and James Cameron pulls off special and visual effects perfectly. But he can't write dialogue very well because it's cheesy as hell in this movie. The movie's bad guy named Coffee, played by Michael Bean, is a prick to everyone, including his boss Bud and Corporate Lindsay. And I like Michael Bean, but his role as a jackass is adequate. But at best, when the guy with the pet rat, I think his name was Hippie, um, with the ship, he grabs his rat to save its life and I did like that little moment on the into the movie Lindsay discovers the underwater alien or, or let's call it the abyss to make it short behind her white while fixing some of the damage from the sinking ship and it's beautiful looking to a point she gets a picture barely and the crew make fun of her until they see it later in the movie which for making fun of what she saw what jerk what jerks she notices that coffee sees hate in the abyss because he doesn't understand what it is kind of is kind of relatable but it's no excuse to be a dick about it excuse my french at one point he brings a nuclear weapon on board and that's something they that called be dangerous on board and on water ship and he realizes now Lindsay knows what he's up to and that they'll take steps to shoot it at the abyss kind of jerking kind of jerkish the abyss enters the ship and looks around and meets the good side of the team and mimics Lindsay's face until coffee cuts it in half with the door and I really liked that special effect I thought that was pretty damn neat someone sees a nuclear weapon to be aimed to the abyss and knows it's Coffee's idea, and he traps the good crew members plus Bud and Lindsay, and that's when the audience realizes Coffee is the bad guy of this movie. And James Cameron does a good job to know when to say he's the bad guy, and he tries to bomb the abyss until the until um, Bud and Lindsay stop him with the uh, with the boat chase that I liked. And that kills him off for good, 
when Bud and Lindsay finish fighting Copy, Bud and Lindsay gets Lindsay back up to the ship as she's drowning, and Bud tries to pro prolongingly get to get Lindsay to breathe. And it did go a little too long, but she eventually go gets back alive just by slapping her, and that was cheesy as hell and very unrealistic. Bud goes in the water to a long way down to find the abyss and make new friends, and the storm that was brought up earlier in this film is gone, and a captain reaches the crew, believing Bud is dead, and how? Because he was staying in the world of the abyss, which looks absolutely beautiful, but wait, Bud is alive, how? They made him breathe again underwater, but gave him some air, and made new friends with the abyss. And I thought that was a good way to end this movie, in my opinion. Now it's time for the rating. I'll give this movie a 7.2 out of 10. Not James Cameron's best, but this movie is beautiful looking, and the special effects are groundbreaking for 1989, and the visual effects are neat, but the acting is cheesy as hell, and James Cameron can create a beautiful world, but, he's, but he, like George Lucas, can't write dialogue, but yeah, it was a good movie. So, like I said at the beginning, I did, I am going to do True Lies next week, and the week after that, before Halloween, I will do Titanic, and then after Terminator Dark Feet, I will get to Avatar. Otherwise, I've done Aliens, I'm not doing the documentary stuff, I'm not into documentaries, and probably next summer I'll get to Piranha, and I will be back next week with True Lies, and until next time, and action.